That's an incredible expedition. We Thank really, you. it was, it, it was very fun and uh, very uh, challenging. Um, and there are lots of good stories, but I had, uh, I was sitting in my living room one day and I thought, you know, all of those Apollo F1 engines are sitting there. They're on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And theoretically, you could recover them. And I, was, I thought to myself, how hard could it be? So I, uh, I, went, I went to the web and I did a few web searches. And it took me 15 minutes and I had the lat long coordinates of the radar tracking data of where the booster stage of each of the Apollo missions impacted the ocean. That took me 15 minutes. That was the only part of this that would be easy. <laughs> it got very hard from there. And uh, we uh, took several years and we, first we hired a, uh, a, a team that did side scanning sonar and they covered 300 square miles of the Atlantic. We knew roughly where they were, but they still weren't easy to find. Things drift as they go down. It's actually, it's a big ocean. They're three miles underwater, 7,000 pounds per square inch of pressure at that depth. And, uh, but we found uh, uh, objects that looked like they were almost certainly, they were big metallic objects and lots of them. It looked like it was the final resting place of those Apollo uh, boosters. And so uh, uh, the next summer, we had the ship you saw here, the Seabed Worker, and it had a crew of 60 people, and uh, I also made it kind of a family thing. I took my brother and my dad and my mom and my brother-in-law um, and a bunch of people who are real experts in marine salvage. My mom was the only woman on a ship of 60 people for three weeks. And so there were, you know, a bunch of Norwegian sailors and, and people from all over the world. And the, on the very first day, I kind of got a little bit of a sense of what I was in for. The captain of the vessel came to me and he said, look, we've never had a woman on the boat before. So I went ahead and uh, took the liberty of removing all of the pornography from the common area. <laughs> uh, I was, okay, thank you. Uh, that's probably a fine idea. And, uh, but it worked, everything was fantastic. And uh, the, 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 the crew and the people we'd hired were very professional. Uh, we had lots of bad weather. We had a, a week where we couldn't work at all. It turns out that all of the kitchen crew, the, the mess crew, were uh, Filipino. And they put together a dart tournament that lasted for like five days continuously. And uh, they crushed us. They were just so good, it wasn't even really fair. But uh, it was really a fun mission. And the, the technical skill required to pluck those things from the ocean, we used remotely operated vehicles. It was super high tech. Uh, fiber optic cables, three miles long, uh, the, the electric power that, that drove the hydraulic pumps on those vehicles was three or four thousand volts that went down through cables three miles long. Uh, and it was really an incredible uh, uh, thing to do. And now you can see one of the F1 injectors here and the, uh, that exhibit is going to continue. Yes, thank you for donating that. That's a terrific exhibit here at the museum.